Welcome back to In Need of a Refill, where God's Word and the coffee are never in short supply. Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss anything that's coming up on In Need of a Refill. If you have a comment or question or passage you'd like me to look at, leave in the section below. We'll get to it just as fast as we can. Who do people say that I am? This is one of the key questions for any person when dealing with Jesus. Around this time of year, it's December 14th today, uh, on Thursday when I'm recording this, people are gearing up for Christmas. Some of them are just looking at the price tags, saying, what can I spend? How can I uh, buy more presents for, for people? What do I need to do to dress up my house kind of thing? Okay, sure, whatever. Some, their attention turns to Jesus, but it turns to uh, the baby in the manger. And okay, sure, there's no bad reason to begin studying the Bible. There's no bad reason to get interested. Okay, I understand that. But here's the ticket. Jesus didn't stay in the manger. He didn't stay the baby. We like the baby in the manger story because it's uh, safe. You know, no no baby is a danger to people. You know, uh, no baby demands anything more than uh, food, attention, and sleep, and uh, the occasional changing. You know, that's when you pass the baby over to a friend or your wife. No, not just kidding there. <laughs> um, but uh, we don't necessarily like the idea of the later Jesus because it costs us something. He costs us something. He's dangerous. That baby in the manger, he's not dangerous. So that who do people say that I am question is one that we answer over and over ourselves. You know, who do we say Jesus is? And the question that comes after that often is, do our behaviors, do our attitudes back up what we just said about who Jesus is? Well, today what we're going to do is take a look at that question. We're going to start in Mark chapter 6, uh, 14 through 16. Here's what's recorded for us. And King Herod heard of it, for his name had become well known. And people were saying, John the Baptist has risen from the dead. And that is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. But others were saying, he is Elijah. And others were saying, he is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he kept saying, John, whom I beheaded, has risen. Okay, so we're dealing with Herod the Tetrarch. We're dealing with Herod Antipas, okay? It's easy to get all those guys mixed up. Uh, but take a look at this map. The red line that you see at the bottom, uh, or actually in the middle here, um, everything above that is what Herod uh, Antipas was in charge of. Okay, so that is the region that he is concerned with. This is the region where Jesus has been doing most, if not all, of his work at this point, and he is getting quite a name for himself. So, you know, Herod hears about this. Um, the of it that we see in 614 may be the preachings, the healings, uh, exorcisms that both Jesus and his disciples had been doing uh, in the early er, sections in Mark 6. Uh, there's been a lot of rumors going around. Who is Jesus? Well, some, at least Herod, John the Baptist, risen from the dead. Elijah, I mean, the Old Testament says Elijah would return. And then others, according to the disciples, 
one of the prophets. Okay, so this particular scene that we see here in Mark 6, uh, 14 through 16, is actually before Peter's confession that Jesus is something more than simply a prophet or John the Baptist risen from the dead or Elijah. So let's continue reading, but this time let's go to Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 16. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he was asking his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, and others Elijah, but still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am. Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So Jesus poses this question of his identity, but he poses it on two fronts. One, who do people say that I am? You know, I mean, this is an important question. Hey, uh, who's the crowd uh, supporting in this particular thing? Who do they say? that I am. Who's who's going to win this thing or whatever the case is? You know, uh, who do the crowds say that I am? Who do the people? But then the second one is equally and in some regards more important. Who do you, who do the disciples say that I am? You see, that's a, that's the thing. We all have to answer that question. It's not just them. Well, the disciples confirm who people say that Jesus is. You know, and it's pretty much the same list from Mark. Uh, they throw in Jeremiah. You know, but here's the thing. All of them seem to answer this. In all of the accounts of this confession or of uh, this question, all the disciples seem to answer this one. But when he poses the personal question, but who do you say that I am? In each account, Peter is the only one that answers that question. So for all his... Um, impulsiveness, for all of his um, boneheadedness, Peter at least has the backbone to answer this question when seemingly none of the other 11 would. When he answers this question that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, here's what Jesus says next in Matthew 16, verse 17. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. You see, Jesus praises Peter. He says, You got that one, Peter. Way to go. Good answer. That's the one. You know the answer to this. What about us? See, like we've said during this whole thing, We've got to answer that question. Well, the world has to answer that question, too. Many years ago, when I was trying to verify that Christianity was legit, that the Bible was actually God's word, that Jesus was who he said he was, I looked high, I looked low, I read whatever I could get my hands on. And one of the things that I read was from Josh McDowell. Liar, lunatic, Lord. And some people throw in legend as well as to who Jesus of Nazareth actually was. Well, we know that he's not a legend. He's in the history books. There was a Jesus of Nazareth who grew up in the first century that taught people that got himself crucified He's in secular history books. So legend, okay, no. Uh, we can pretty well get rid of that one. 
A liar, you know, here's the problem with a liar. A lot of times, what people will say is they won't necessarily use the word liar. What they'll use is, Jesus was a good moral teacher. Okay, here's the problem with that. Jesus made some very hefty claims. The biggest one is to be that he was the son of the living God. He was deity. I mean, here's the thing. He is either right and he is deity. He is God. He is to be worshipped. He is to be praised. He is to be followed. Or he's not. And if he's not, then he is a liar. He is not a good moral teacher because he is a liar. Liars are not good moral humans. But, you know, one of the other things that you look at is the disciples during the aftermath of the crucifixion and the resurrection, everything changes. You know, and it's one of those situations where they go from terror to so much boldness, they can't be stopped. Either they were uh, gullible enough to be duped that badly and, you know, to receive that kind of boldness, or they weren't being lied to, and Jesus is who he said he is. The second option there makes more sense. You know, um... The option that Jesus perhaps it was a lunatic. People might follow a crazy person for a little while, but they're not going to be willing over centuries, over and over and over and over and over again, to die for some guy that lived, some lunatic that lived almost 2,000 years ago. You know, so... That doesn't make sense either. You know, so, I mean, the only thing that really does make sense is that he is the Lord. He is the Son of God. You know, and that's the thing. You know, everyone has to make the decision for themselves. I can't make it for you. Your preacher, your elders, your mother, your father. They can't make it for you. You have to make that decision for yourself as to who Jesus is. Not to make a decision is to make a decision. Well, here is one of the things that Jesus says about himself. Take a look at John chapter 6, 35 through 40. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. But I say to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will certainly not cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me that of all that he has given me, I lose nothing, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in him will have eternal life, and I myself will raise him up on the last day. I am the bread of life. Now, in English, Okay, sure, you know, um, it seems poetic. It's more than poetic. In the original language, he is making deity claims. When you look back at Exodus chapter 3, when Moses says, Who shall I tell them is sending me? Yahweh tells them, 
You tell him I am is sending you. He says, I am who I am. It is the same structure grammatically in John chapter 6 and most of the times that Jesus says, I am. He uses the same structure that Yahweh used. He is claiming deity here. He is saying, I am God. I am the source for spiritual nutrition. I am the one. You want to be filled? Come to me. You want to be uh, satiated? Come to me. I am the one. I am the source for spiritual nutrition. And I am giving you a message that is not simply mine. I am giving you the message from the Father. I am doing what I was given to do. Here is the message. You know, that's the thing. That's what Jesus says about himself. What do we say about him? As we get ready to close today, I have a few questions for us to consider and hopefully help us to improve our walk with God. I mean, the first one is the one that we have been posing the entire lesson. Who do we say Jesus is? This is of utmost importance. Do our behaviors, do our attitudes back up what we just said about who Jesus is? If we believe he is the Lord, are we willing to serve him? Are we willing to do what he says? Do we seek to be known as a Christian even when we're in the minority? This is something that the early disciples had to deal with. This is something uh, Christians have had to deal with over the centuries. This is something that we will continue to deal with until our Lord and Master returns. Are we willing to be known as a Christian even when the deck is stacked against us, when we're in the minority, that is something that you and I have to answer. And unfortunately, it is something we have to answer not just once, but every day that we seek to walk and serve and live according to God's word. Thank you for our time together today. Have a blessed week. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss anything that's coming up on In Need of a Refill. And remember, if you're ever in need of a refill on God's Word, all we have to do is take it off our shelves, spend some time with Him. We won't regret it. Have a blessed week.